Jason for coming out. Um, Integra Gold was our predecessor company. We are Integra Resources now, but it's a, it's a good reminder from, from Brian on that, on that front. I'm pretty sure you said Integra Gold, which is, which is okay because Integra Gold was a, a project in Quebec, uh, more specifically in Val d'Or, that our team took from a 15 million market cap to a sale of 600 million from 2012 up until 2017. Um, at that point in time, we, we took a couple months off and then sort of threw our hat into the auction process, the bidding process for the Delamar project that Kinross was putting up for sale in the summer of 17. And we were able to come through and, and uh, acquire that asset. So it's just been uh, a little bit over two years now. Cautionary statement. And in that time frame, so far what we know is this project already has a robust economic mine plan here that uh, talks about producing 125,000 ounces a year over 10 years, sort of a mid-tier production profile. Uh, low cost, uh, excellent margins on it, especially when we use 1350 as our, our base case input on the price of gold. Uh, so obviously the numbers are much higher now. We'll look at that a little bit closer. As far as we're concerned, this is just kind of the start. So when you're a retail investor looking at this story, uh, perhaps you already are a shareholder. And if you're looking at it, you're getting something that's been largely de-risked that already has a very robust sort of mine plan over a 10-year period. Um, again, a mid-tier sort of size. Uh, we think that's just kind of the tip of the ice iceberg on this. So for those of you that like to take notes, I'd say those three key points that Brian was referring to one would be you're going to see high grade get added to the story this year with the work that we're going to be doing. We've also started to add some of that with the limited drilling we did at War Eagle uh, before sort of the winter season came in in November. So that's going to pick up again. Uh, the second thing is with shallow step out drill targets that we have at Florida Mountain and Delamar, uh, where the resource currently lies, uh, we anticipate being able to add a significant amount of ounces, uh, just like I say, with shallow step out holes off of the resource into oxide and transitional material, which work very well with the heap leach. Uh, and there's a whole host of other targets. There's another epithermal system that we're going to be getting into and, and, and testing. Uh, and at Florida Mountain, we've also uh, been finding a lot more high grade with even some of the MET drilling that we've been doing. So I guess a couple of the hallmarks on the team that, we've, that we have at Integra. Uh, we're very aggressive uh, in, in a few different ways. We're aggressive in capital markets. We're e easily able to raise capital. Our last three financings have all been verbally spoken for within 24 to 48 hours. We're about 70% institutionally held right now. We're also very aggressive with our marketing and we're also very aggressive advancing our projects forward. So those are all good things you wanna hear if you are an investor. Um, and what we've been able to do in the two years that we've had uh, this project now, I think speaks to what I was just talking about. Initially, there was no resource. Uh, we now have a 3.9 million ounce uh, M&I resource with another 400,000 in the inferred category. Uh, originally, the metallurgy was a question. We've done a lot of work on that front to the point where we now have a, a very strong PEA uh, built on the back of a lot of that, uh, along with a, you know, a plan for a large heap leach operation with a 2,000 ton per day mill as well. Uh, Treasury, uh, we've been able to go from basically in terms of shareholders, uh, when we came off the win at Integra Gold, we'd made institutional investors uh, some good money in a really bad market, made some friends that way, but unfortunately when we started we were just advanced exploration and usually the two main criteria are 100 million market cap uh, or at least a development stage project. So from going from very small institutional uh, holding, we're now at about 70%. Uh, our, our team itself, uh, we've put in about two and a half million of our own money coming off of the Integra Gold sale. Uh, so we've got some good skin in the game as well. Uh, 30 million carries us through uh, the rest of this year with all the studies that are underway with the 16,000 meters of uh, exploration drilling we're going to be doing and covers us for the entire year. So in terms of foot on the gas, as it says on the top of this slide here, when you look at that sort of bottom section, the second box has got the arrow. This is Delamar pointing down. That's generally the area where that 4.4 million ounces resides. So there's a couple other epithermal systems to the north-northwest there. Uh, that are largely untested, especially at depth. Uh, and then, of course, there's War Eagle and Florida Mountain. So I'll, I'll jump into those a, a little bit as we move forward. But I want to give you a bit of an idea of the impact that adding a bit of high grade to the story does to the economics. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go down to the PEA slide and we'll have a quick look at that. So this PEA is built off of 1.8 million ounces. As I mentioned, we have 4.4 million ounces. 
so the reason for that is because at the time, the sulfide material, the metallurgy wasn't far enough advanced to be able to include that in. So what we've got here is sort of a mid-tier production profile, 125,000 ounces over 10 years with very strong numbers built off of 1350 gold and 1690 silver. Uh, so this is something that we could build ourselves with a $200 million Canadian uh, capex to get that into production. So it's very doable for us, and that's also why you saw Coor Mining come in and uh, make a strategic investment into us in our last raise uh, that closed the first week of December of last year. Uh, but what this looks like in terms of adding the sulfide component, which is in the neighborhood of 2 million ounces, uh, that's essentially sort of, um, you know, to let the majors know that this project has that type of scale potential. Uh, that obviously changes the numbers on here sort of dramatically. We'd be then in the neighborhood of a 250,000 ounce a year production profile. And that NPV you see there would go up. The after-tax IRR would probably go down. I mean, today it's probably north of 60% or in that range with current pricing of gold. Um, but obviously a bigger project also has probably double the capex. So it's no longer something that we would build ourselves. But when you look at the landscape between Canada, Australia and the US, there's about 29 projects approximately that have 3 million ounces or greater of gold equivalent. So for the majors, once this market starts to really pick up, that's usually when you see the M&A occurring. And I think that's why we're positioned as, as sort of a target there. However, if things were to, for some reason, go against Brian's thoughts on, on the gold sector, this is certainly something we could build ourselves that has good margins at lower gold prices too. So going forward here, Florida mountains, very interesting. We have about a million ounces of our 4.4 million ounces over there. Uh, on the slide on the right, you can see on that anomaly map, or pardon me, the one on the left there, it's probably an easier one to see. You can see the lines where we've kind of outlined where that purple is in the background. Um, you can see almost a mirror image of very similar size, just a couple hundred meters uh, to the east of that. So that's an untested uh, new anomaly that we'll be getting into this year. Uh, and we still have lots of room for expansion at Florida Mountain already under the current sort of footprint that you see there. In terms of War Eagle, that was an acquisition we made uh, about a year ago. And once we had kind of built up a very solid low grade resource uh, in the back half of last year is when we started to now look at that high grade. And I think I completely forgot to mention on that PEA slide, when you look at what the impact a high grade has here is, imagine you've got a 27,000 ton per day heap leach operation, and after two years that pays for a 2,000 ton per day mill. So that mill's gonna be running one gram per ton material through the current existing PEA that we have planned. So even adding a pocket of about a half a million ounces of high grade, it doesn't need to be a whole lot. What you can then do is take, say, 500 ton per day of the 2,000 ton per day uh, mill and substitute the low grade one gram material with five to 10 gram per ton material, and then your economics get juiced up again from there. So that's why I say we don't need a whole heck of a lot here. So War Eagle, in terms of what we got there so far, we got three holes into that. Uh, and what we did was the one in the middle there you see with some of the really high grade results that came back. Uh, we've got now 150, pardon me, 300 meters of strike length there. And in terms of the soil uh, sort of anomaly there, we've got 1.2 kilometers of strike length on that. And there's these shoots that you'll hit into every so often. But instead of just kind of going back 25 foot step out and targeting into the first shoot that we found, we're trying to expand it and look at it from a bigger company sort of perspective. Uh, so War Eagle will be getting back in there sort of towards the end of May and starting to drill there again once the snow uh, subsides. And then in terms of uh, black sheep, uh, again, these are all just pretty colored maps that basically are telling you that we've got some targets to go after. So we do have a heck of a lot of targets we'll be going after. Uh, in terms of with the last minute here, uh, what I'll try and leave you with is there's a bit of an opportunity here as well uh, when you look at where we sit in terms of sort of market cap and total resource, and we've got a few of these slides. And the underlying message is, is when you compare us to a lot of our peers uh, to which we have uh, equally, if not maybe stronger economics, then we're still trading at a bit of a discount there. I think some of that's attributed to the fact that unfortunately Midas has had some problems with permitting in Idaho. There's just recently been a few acquisitions in Idaho that have occurred, and Idaho is ranked in the top five places to be operating. In, the U.S., so we feel we're in an excellent jurisdiction and that Idaho will start to gain more traction in terms of, you know, sort of retail and investor sort of uh, acceptance. And from there, we're going to be at the booth just outside the door to the left. So again, just to keep in mind, you're going to be seeing high grade become a part of the story. Low grade, we're going to continue to grow the resource probably around that 5 million ounce mark. 
And then from there, we're also going to be updating that PEA in September that's going to reflect a much bigger uh, production profile. Thanks for your time. Thank you.